A couple days ago, I made a video about magnets. And I tried to explain to you the couple of kinds of magnets that you can buy for magnet fishing. And one of the magnets I talked about was the kind you put on the end of a pick handle. Because, you know, I like to use a pick when I go metal detecting in the rivers. And it just makes it so much easier if you have a magnet that you can reach down underwater and grab stuff with. I'm not sure I was very clear in my description of the different types of magnets you can use for your pick. I talked about the kind that has a countersunk hole that you put a screw in that's real easy to use. But I also talked about a cylinder magnet, which is actually what you see on the magnet behind me. And that's what I use now when I go river hunting. But I only use that because that's what I bought five years ago. Okay, and I would not necessarily recommend you use a cylinder magnet for this reason. Here are some examples of some different picks that you can use and the different types of magnets that you can put on the end of them. This is the pick that you see in most of my videos. I use this all the time. This is a great big magnet on the end. It's two inches across, one inch thick, I think. I'm not even sure, I don't remember. And it's called a cylinder magnet. Now the problem with a cylinder magnet is that there's just a cylinder. It's very difficult to attach that to a pick handle. Especially when you can buy a magnet like this that has a countersunk hole. You just put a screw into it and you're done. I mean you can mount that in like 30 seconds. Whereas this takes a lot of extra work. And you can see I had to use a bunch of pieces just to get it to attach to that handle. In the same way with this one here, I actually had to use a cup that I attached to this and then attach the cylinder magnet inside the cup. And a big problem you're going to have is when you grab something heavy with this magnet, if you don't have like super great glue on the inside of that or epoxy, it'll pull the magnet right out of there and you may not even know it. Because what you'll do is you'll get a signal, you'll reach down and you'll poke the magnet and you won't feel anything. And when you don't feel anything, you're going to think to yourself, well, that's probably just some aluminum or something, you know, because it's not sticking to it. I know it's not iron. Because I did that. And guess what? It was iron, and my magnet is still on the river somewhere because I can't find it. So I highly recommend that if you use a cylinder magnet that looks like a battery and doesn't have a hole in it, that you know what you're doing when you go to attach it to the pick handle because chances are you're going to lose it, just like I did. All right, so back to the picks. This is a pick that I normally use. And I'm gonna put the link to where you can buy this exact pick. A friend of mine out in Arizona named Bunk makes these himself in his shop. They're great picks, I love them. I'm not sure what model that is, but that's the bigger of the two that he sells. This is a smaller one that he sells. I know this is called a burrow pick. And he makes them for uh, looking for gold nuggets and stuff out in the desert, but they work great for water hunting too. One word of caution though, those digging picks are not these digging picks. If you want something that you can like move giant rocks and dig huge holes in the river, go ahead and get something like this. And it weighs about 10 pounds and you'll carry it for about 13 minutes and you'll throw it down because it's way, way too heavy. That's for excavating large amounts of dirt, roots, and moving rocks. These picks are not made for that, so just be a little bit gentle on them. You have to be gentle on them. This is the pick I like to use. And this wide blade right here is for scraping. You can move a lot of mud and sand and silt with it. You're not going to move giant rocks with that, and you're not going to move giant rocks with the pick either. Uh, this is good for like digging in the clay, but you have to be a little careful because this isn't like a super heavy duty pick. I actually put a um, removable thing on here so I can take the handle off easy when I want to pack it into a bag because uh, this thing will stick out right here and can be kind of painful. In fact, sometimes these are super, super sharp right here and I actually grind the tip down a little bit as soon as I get it so that I don't hurt myself too bad. This pick here, I, I picked from Garrett, okay? It's a nice little pick. It's a little too short for what I like and it's also very heavy because it's solid metal. And that's why you'll see the handles on my picks are either made of PVC or wood. Because you want something light, especially when you're in the river all day. And you may have to swim sometimes through deep holes carrying your pick. So, nice little pick. Handle's too short. And looky there. That's where they have the magnet on this thing. Now that... Oh, I almost broke my tooth. <laughs> 
the magnet might be fine if you're looking for gold nuggets in the desert when you can just poke stuff like that and pick it up but when you're digging in the river like we dig in the river you can't take that magnet and stick it down into the mud to locate those hard to find objects because you can't get the whole pick head down into the mud so you don't want to put it here and you don't want to put it on the side of the handle like someone recommended it has to go on the end and if you want to mount a magnet to this you can do it but you're gonna to have to use these little cups and things like that and again I can show you how to do that in another video if you want me to one of the questions I keep getting asked is about the lengths of the pick and again that is just a personal preference I like to have the pick handle long enough that I can actually use it to steady myself when I'm walking over rapids and stuff in the river um, like kind of like a little walking stick and also when you go to pick something up that you can reach down you don't have to put your whole body underwater to pick it up off the bottom so I'm not sure what that is but let's measure it I think a heavy tape on me in fact so this handle is about uh, it's 24 inches long and that works out great for me. I actually have a longer one that my friend Button Bobby made for me. It's about this tall and it works really, really great too. Um, it's just a little bit more bulky to carry when I'm going long distances. The Garrett handle, you can see, is very short. You would not be able to use that as a walking or steadying pole as you're going across the rapids. So I would recommend something a little bit heavier. Now, when you go to order these from Bunk, I think he sells these separate uh, without the handle if you want. And I might recommend going ahead and buying one without the handle because you can make your own handle any length you want. And it probably costs a lot less to ship it because I think with the handle on it, the shipping's pretty steep. Whereas just the head itself is small, you can put a nice small little box. And I'm still getting questions about the big magnet that I have here and everyone wants to get this one. Um, but I don't know if you really need anything quite that big. So what we did is I'm going to do some more testing today. With the, this magnet here, this one that I used in my last magnet video, and uh, I got it from K&J Magnetics, and I'll put a link up uh, in the video description for this as well. We're going to try to pick up a cannonball with this magnet, and this is one that I have not finished cleaning yet. It's been drilled and disarmed, but it's got gunk on it, just like it would in the river. And we're also going to try to pick up this old rifle, which I think might be a 3030. Let's see if we will pick up the rifle, this magnet. Yep, no problem at all. So you, you won't have any problem picking that up out of the water. And again, remember, it's not so much that you need a magnet that's really strong so you can pick stuff up out of the water. It's, I use the magnet more as a tool to help locate the iron. When you run over it with a metal detector and you can hear it down there, you don't know exactly where it is all the time. So you can take the magnet, you can poke down into the mud and you find it. And even if you can't lift it up, you can follow the handle down with your hands, gloved hands, and uh, you can just feel it. You can pick it right up out of the mud that way. You don't have to get a pinpointer out and look around with a pinpointer. Basically, the magnet becomes your pinpointer. All right, so that works fine on the 3030. Let's see if it will pick up a cannonball that still has a gunk on it. This is typical of what you would find in the river with the cocoon. Yes, yeah, it'll still pick that up, no problem. So in my opinion, this magnet is perfect for a pick handle. This is what you should buy, something about this size. And I hope that little video made sense to you, and I apologize for breaking that down into two videos, but I think that some of the uh, things I said in the other one wasn't very clear, um, judging by some of the questions I'm getting in the comments. So hopefully that clarified things a little bit. If you want to know more about how to mount the cylinder magnets on the handle I'll do I'll show you how to do that uh, again but that's a step that I would not necessarily recommend unless you already have that type of magnet get the kind with a hole in it it's so much easier and I don't think they had those when I first started uh, otherwise that's probably what I'd be using today one other thing um, 
I'm going to make a video for you guys on actual magnet fishing and the dangers that you have to watch out for and hopefully I'll get that up for you within a couple of days. Uh, you guys that have the magnets on the rope, you throw it out in the river, you're going to lose it like the very first time you go. I can almost guarantee it. <laughs> Unless you know one simple trick. I'll show you that one simple trick next time.